five schools that had rifle teams with, with shooting ranges. And our teachers were World War II and Korean, Korea vets. We'd go in the basement. We'd be issued a gun. In my case, I loved it. It was a, a blue Mossberg 22. I loved the smell of gunpowder. It woke me up. I mean, between geometry and the, this, and I was going crazy in the classroom. You smell a gunpowder, it wakes you up. The Chinese were onto something. That's why they invented firecrackers. The fact of the matter is, not one incident in, in history in New York City of a kid taking the gun and shooting himself or shooting someone else. Not one. Why is that? Tell me why I was on a rifle team. I never heard of it. I never read of it. Nobody picked up a gun and shot anyone. Nobody ran through the halls. Never. I'll give you three reasons why. You want the three reasons? There were no medication for, for kids then. None. If you were jumpy and smart, they didn't call you ADD. They said he's jumpy and smart. That's all. They didn't call him crazy. They said he's high strung. So either you were smart from being high strung or stupid. If you were smart, they put you in a special class for smart kids. If you were high strung and stupid, they put you in a dumb class. And you learned how to work a lathe. I'm not knocking it, but I'm saying you went into like another division. I'm not knocking that. It's hard to run a late, but it was a different. They didn't put you on a medication, turn you into a psycho. We eventually you go nuts on it. Number one, drugs. There were no drugs for kids in those days because they didn't invent categories of illness that don't even exist. They invented that. They invented the category of illness so they can match a drug to it so they can milk the public dry. That's all. Number one, drugs. Every schoolroom had God bless America, had a prayer to God. We knew there was a God. Everybody knew the Ten Commandments because they were in the schools, even public schools. It said, thou shalt not kill. Okay, so not everyone lived up to all the Ten, but we knew what they were. We knew what the red lights were. We felt bad if we lied, if we cheated, or we stole. Now, no, you don't feel bad if you do that. You go to work for, uh, for the Democrat Party USA. So that's number two. Number three, the homes were more integrated. There was a church. There was a family. There was a mother. There was a father. You see what I'm saying? So look where we've come today. The kids go berserk with guns. Don't blame the guns. Start with the real blame. Blame with the society itself and the medical society in particular and the drug peddlers specifically. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Here's a topper. Look how I'm going to end the hour. Listen to this headline. Nurse giving work workplace flu shots reuse syringes. I told you how to go this morning to have blood work. My worst fear, I mean, I watched them like a hawk. I don't care who they are. This is a Russian woman, which unto itself doesn't mean anything. They're all in like the phlebotomy here. I don't know what that. So I go in, they tie you up, and, um, and I always look like a hawk with the right eye. I look to see where she's pulling the needle from. And I always joke, it's, uh, it's a used one, right, from uh, Ellis Street. I joke around like, they don't even get the joke because they're from Moscow. But I make sure it's like, you know, out of a new package. Look at this one. Nurse giving workplace flu shots reused syringes. That's very encouraging. West winds in New Jersey. Uh, a nurse administering flu shots to dozens of employees of a pharmaceutical company. Re reused syringes, the State Department of Health said Wednesday. Now, a State Department of Health in New Jersey is not an oxymoron. It's a, it's a laugh line for Seinfeld. State Department of Health in New Jersey? You must be joking. Then they go further. There's a low risk of infection. How can there be a low risk of infection? If they use the same needle over and over again on people, what do you mean low risk? How do they know that? What if one of the other patients whose needle they reused had Hep B or C or HIV? What do you mean low risk of infection? To me, it's a high risk of infection. But we have such a corrupt, a corrupt CDC, they're nowhere to be found. Which is why I want to run it when Trump becomes president. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I'm live. I need some music. It's The Savage Nation, hour number two. 80 years old, still running around with a guitar. I don't know where he gets the Constitution from. But the thing is, only the soccer thug could save England, and they've been neutralized by the ninnies. That's all. No, you look at the early days of the soccer thugs in England. They were the ones who could have stopped this invasion from, uh, from the, uh, let us say, the uh, other world into England. The soccer thug could have stopped it.
but they had initially been destroyed by the progressive movement in England, and they wrapped them around their little finger. They scared them to death. They took their lives away from them. They're the men who could have stopped the invasion. Now it's too late. It's the same in America. The the tough men have been branded evil in this country by the uh, the progressives. The really tough men are either, uh, well, let, let's let it go. The tough men in this country have been destroyed by the progressive psychopaths who are suicidal, who not only want to die themselves, but want to kill the nation along with them. Let's put it to you that way, make it real simple. You take a look at Jerry Brown, Mr. Progressive. Mr. Progressive talks about a euthanasia law like it's golden. We've now given people the right to die. You hear this? What, what, why is that a blessing? Why is it debasing human life? Why is that a blessing? Where is it written that that is an advancement for civilization to grant people the right to commit suicide with some quack doctor who will give them the, medic the medicine to kill themselves with? And by the way, what's interesting to me is they seem to have a medication to kill people with who want to die because they're depressed or whatever, but they can't find the same medication to kill people on death row. In Jerry Brown's California, they put a guy on death row for 35 years. They come up with every cockamamie uh, reason. Uh, the, every, every cockamamie reason they come up with from Stanford Law. The medication doesn't work. It's this. It's a, a cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, how'd they find the concoction, a cocktail that can kill people in two seconds if they want to die? They can't use that concoction at San Quentin and take, to take these people off the planet? Just thinking. You know, just saying. But this is our number two of the Savage Nation. There's a lot of stories I haven't touched on. Then I don't know what I want to do. The politics again. You want me to go down the line? Oh, let me read you a few political stories, then I'll take your calls. Top right, michaelsavage.com. DHS confesses no databases exist to vet Syrian refugees. Really? No screening. How many of these single men from Syria are jihadis? Well, to Obama, perhaps the more the better. That way he has his own ISIS front here in America before it's too late. You heard of the Nusra front in Syria? This is the Obama front here in America that he's bringing in. According to some, but I don't want to get extreme about it. You know he's a patriot. I mean, you know he loves America. And you know he wants only the best for the people. Yeah, okay. Equal pay law threatens to accelerate California business exodus. Okay. Another Jerry Brown crackpot idea. College bro arrested over mac and cheese rant. Now, that was a crazy video that they say gone viral. I, I had to watch this thing. This kid was crazy. Goes in drunk into a cafeteria from uh, the University of Connecticut. Goes into a cafeteria, drunk, and he wants macaroni and cheese with bacon and jalapeno peppers. And the uh, manager says, no, you're carrying an open container. You can't eat. Can't have it. So the kid goes berserk. The 19-year-old freshman, Luke Gaddy, from Bayville, New York. And he starts screaming at the poor schlub manager. Puts him down. Says, who are you? You're just the manager of nothing. And you can't eat here. And the poor guy, I mean the manager, he starts pushing the manager around. And it goes on and on for minutes. Finally, the drunk kid has to be headlocked by another employee. I think a cook comes out and puts a headlock on him. The cook looks like he has a little military experience or wrestling because he took this kid down right away. Took him down like a lame deer. But it doesn't end there. As the, as the cop comes in finally, very professional, spins the brat over, and he leads him away. He spits in the face of the uh, poor manager again. Unbelievable. What does that tell you about society? John, WABC, I assume you've seen that video, right? I, I watched the video, Dr. Savage, and it shows the depravity of the students in our nation. Nobody would help this guy out. All these UConn students were standing around like it was nothing, like he was expressing himself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're saying the other kids who were buying food should have stepped in and stopped this brat. Somebody should have, but you know what? We look down upon the working man in this society. All these students said, you know what? Maybe he, he's just expressing himself. This is, he does it a little differently. We have to... <laughs> oh, you mean that was his lifestyle choice, to spit in the face of the manager, wouldn't give him mac and cheese while he was drunk. Right, exactly. And, and not one, but there was one kid who attempted, but as soon as nobody was backing him up, he was, oh, I'm out of here. Because they're so afraid of liability and law. yeah, it's the don't blame the other students, blame the lawyers. The lawyers have destroyed society. Everyone is afraid to intervene for fear that they get sued by the kid. That's the real. I, I don't blame the other kids. I blame the rotten lawyers. Shakespeare had it right. The manager by this poor guy. I mean, all he did was trying to stop a drunk from buying macaroni and cheese. But you know, as I watched the video though uh, of the kid demanding his cheese with those filthy, dirty sweat. Look how they dress on a college campus. 
Take a look at the outfit the kid's wearing to school. A filthy, dirty pair of sweatpants that I, I wouldn't give a homeless bum. The parents let him go to school. But look at the other kids, how they're dressed. That's a college boy today. What a, what a degeneration of a society. The idea of a press and a pair of pants is anathema to them. That was something that looks tailored or oppressed. That's the mark of a, 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 a geek. If you come to school with a shirt on that's clean. Look at this jerk. Flip-flops, drunk, sweatpants. You can imagine what he's majoring in at the University of Connecticut. What do you mean, University of Connecticut? What do you major in there? I can't even imagine. There must have some a course or two that you can major in, maybe media studies or something, or gender stuff. They're probably big on gender studies, I would think, at the University of Connecticut. Maybe cafeteria management. They have a whole program in that. I'm just kidding. You can go anywhere in a college today. It's all, all up to you. Look at him, smiling. The kid caught him on a camera. I can't imagine what the parents are going to do when they get this story home. So the first thing I thought was, okay, the kid's going to sue the college for manhandling him after he was so drunk on the mac and cheese, after spitting in the manager's face. The father will get some lawyer from uh, Manhattan, and they'll sue the University of Connecticut for manhandling their little brat. But then I said to the someone who knows the lawyers, is not a chance in hell because any judge who looks at this will throw the case out because they hate spoiled brats. Well... That's unless it's a judge appointed by Obama, uh, pushing the manager now. Look at the poor schlub. I felt bad for the bald manager. This kid was so out of control. Yes, well, you don't even know what I'm talking about. You have to watch it. But 12 people watch this tape, and I'm talking about it. I know I should be talking about the Constitution, uh, Article number 402, Section 301, Clause 907B. And under that section, if you... Pull it apart, and you look in it, you'll find out exactly why, if we can only... Okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm talking about a University of Connecticut student who got into a confrontation with a campus food court manager who wouldn't let him buy mac and cheese. I couldn't stop watching it. It was like nine minutes long. Nine minutes and seven. The best part is at the end when the, when the, uh, the cook comes out and takes him down. I linked it up from the post on michaelsavage.com. College bro arrested over mac and cheese rant at food court. Wait, there was another little story that caught my attention. It's right in my backyard. I used to live in that horrible town. Tantric sex teacher at clothing optional retreat. You hear what they call it today? Clothing optional retreat, a nudist camp. Tantric sex teacher, a bunch of sex maniacs. Come on, tantric sex teacher. What tan? What do they know? Him and the skank wife of his. Tantric. Look who teaches these courses. I mean, would you take sex education from these two? A, a tantric teacher who made DVDs on yoga for lovers. You hear this nonsense? And taught classes at a clothing optional retreat. Was found shot to death on a hiking trail in, in Fairfax, California. Still holding on to the leash of his wounded dog authority. Said, Look, it's a sad story. I know those trailers very well. I lived in that town for 13 years. Someone just killed him for his car. And uh, I will hope they cap capture these people and, uh, you know, they'll try them to the full extent of the law in California, which means they'll get 13 days in jail. And then they'll go to work for the Department of Corrections under Jerry Brown. A biker found Carter's body. Ah, there's nothing more to this. But look at the look. I mean, with all due respect to, the, to his wife, uh, who founded the Ecstatic Living Institute. Let me tell you something. Anyone who teaches tantric sex, you I'll give you right now, right away. I, I know from from the 70s, that type. They go into this business. They, at least, I would say that you can you can get a new PhD in microbiology if you're cultured their their saliva. Let's put it to you that way. If you wanted to earn a PhD in microbiology, go to a tantric sex teacher and culture their saliva. There'll be three new organisms you can name for your grandmother. And they call it. I love the local Bay Area paper says revered revered therapist found shot on, on a trail. What revered therapist? A Tantra teacher participated in training sessions across the U.S. That's 17 nymphomaniacs in 12 states. And in Canada and Costa Rica, you hear? 25 people attended a seminar. It's probably over 25 years. But he's a famed therapist in the Bay Area. But it's, I mean, this shouldn't have happened to him. I'm not saying that. A couple released DVDs on tantric massage. <laughs> what a racket. Yoga for lovers. Anyone who has to watch a sex tape on how to be a lover, uh, I suggest you don't waste your money. And meditation, yeah, meditation. They all wear outfits just like that kid at the University of Connecticut. Dirty sweatpants. They also taught classes at Harbin Hot Springs, a clothing optional retreat in the Middletown Mountains that burned down in the wildfire, according to the newspaper. All right, I, I think I've said all I can say about it. I feel bad that the guy got shot. It shouldn't have happened. And I hope they catch the guys who killed him, the girl with the dirty hair and all. They caught him on videotape in town with his car. Yeah, okay, it's California. Will they ever find them? Who knows? Here's a third story trending on the news. 
is covering up some shady.